Kansas City safety Brian Cook was injured in Sunday night's game against the Packers in what appeared to be a significant ankle injury. Welcome back everyone, my name is Dr. Stephen Wilson and this channel is designed to better understand the mechanism of sports injuries. We'll go right to the replay here. There's a lot going on in this play, so we'll start with Cook who is right here and he is jersey number six for the Chiefs. He is the safety and he's coming up to make the tackle on the Packers ball carrier. As a defender, it is Cook's responsibility to maintain containment on the play and to force the ball carrier back towards the inside of the field where his teammates are in a better position to make a tackle. Cook does do a good job of this, but it requires him to stop suddenly on the turf and as a result, we can see how his left foot gets stuck, but the forward momentum of his body carries him past his left foot. Specifically, it's the, the lug or the claw of his cleat under the front part of his foot or his forefoot that gets caught. This keeps his left forefoot stationary in somewhat of a, uh, an anchored position on the turf while his body's momentum carries him past this point. Therefore, something has to give. In this moment, it was not a chunk of turf that came loose, nor was it his shoe that twisted off of his foot. It was the structure of his ankle that gave way. While this is occurring, you can see how Cook's body and his center of gravity is lowering down towards the ground as he stumbles and falls right here. When his body moves past his stationary foot and becomes lower towards the ground, this places an increasingly twisting force through his left ankle and knee. Now the implications of injury here are great, and I'll do my best to unpack everything and explain it here, so please bear with me. We'll start at the obvious point, Cook's left ankle. So when we switch to the anatomy screen here, we can see a picture of your lower leg. It was his left forefoot that got caught in the turf, which caused the twisting motion through his ankle. Your ankle, by definition, is a hinge joint, so it likes to simply move back and forth in one direction. Now, of course, there is a bit of lateral movement or deviation that can occur in your ankle joint, but it does not like to be forced beyond its regular range of motion. So when Cook's foot was planted and his body kept moving, this caused his foot to externally rotate or for his toes to turn outwards. When this happens, especially with a compressive load from above, like him falling on the ground, this will create a twisting and rotational movement through the ankle joint itself. Your ankle joint is made up of your tibia right here and your fibula right beside it and your talus bone on the bottom. These bones are held together with connective tissue called ligaments. Now Cook's initial x-rays indicated he did not have a fracture which is remarkable considering the mechanism of injury. So by going by the media release, we'll assume that this is accurate, although he will need further imaging to confirm. But right now, let's say no spiral or any other kind of fracture. This means the twisting and compressive load will damage soft tissue only. An ankle dislocation is still a very real possibility, even without a fracture, as the inside portion of his ankle came under great stress. Uh, you have numerous important ligaments in this area that help stabilize your ankle and they would have been affected or injured. And by injury, I mean stretched or sprained or, or even torn. Most notably, your deltoid ligament right here as its job is to prevent your foot from excessive eversion and external rotation. Uh, both of which, as we can see, did occur in Cook's injury. The other problem that we can see on the play here is the positioning of his left knee. In this picture here, we can see how when Cook falls to the ground, his left foot is caught and is turned outwards in a very unnatural position. Yes, his ankle will be injured, but if we turn our attention a little bit further up the kinetic chain here, we can see how there is also torsion going through his left knee joint. Much like your ankle, your knee is also a hinge joint that likes to move back and forth in one direction. Any twisting or rotation through the joint will also affect its important stabilizing structures. Now, if we go back to the anatomy screen here, we'll take a look at what a knee joint looks like. Here we have again the tibia or shin bone here. Uh, beside it is its buddy, the fibula and above the knee is your thigh bone called the femur. These bones have to be held together 
in order to stabilize your knee. Usually when we externally rotate your foot and ankle, this will also create external rotation through your tibia bone, which then affects the alignment of your knee. When the alignment of your knee is off, this is what negatively affects the ligaments. Here's your MCL and this is your ACL. Your anterior cruciate ligament is located right here and its job is to prevent twisting or forward movement of your tibia in relation to your femur. Brian Cook experienced a great deal of twisting of his tibia in relation to his femur which would certainly stress this ligament. Again, uh, ligament stress will create tension causing either the stretch of a sprain or even the tear of the tissue. A meniscal injury is also a possibility as the rotation through your knee causes a great deal of stress to the smooth cartilage that separates your tibia from your femur. I also want to mention the alignment of your kneecap or patella uh, can also be compromised with this type of twisting motion. Your patella can become misaligned with a a partial subluxation or a full dislocation and this is when the patella is no longer in proper position within the femoral groove. If this were to occur the vast majority of the time the patella uh, will move towards the outside or the lateral portion of your knee which can cause significant pain as it will scrape against the cartilage on the underside of your kneecap. So as we can see here Brian Cook's injury will be complex as multiple structures are in danger, which leads to many differential diagnoses. On Monday, Andy Reid mentioned in a press briefing that Cook had had previous work done on his left ankle, and this will only complicate his prognosis even more. As always, please be well.